PK in the universe and I'm back again and today I'm here to talk about the Retron 5. I haven't talked about this topic in like seven years. I'm going to try to go through this pretty quick. I'm going to try to make a video that's maybe shorter than the original video I made and I'll post a link down to that cringe video from seven years ago. So here we go. So let's talk about the Retron 5. It was a system that initially back in the old days I was super excited for. You got to understand the time context of back in the early 2010s. Um, there really wasn't a lot of really, you know, even decent clone consoles. There's still, I mean, there's better ones now in this day and age, and they've improved a lot upon them. The idea of being able to play, you know, five different systems was something else, honestly. It was unbelievable. I was excited for it. Originally, it was going to have AV out, and it was going to have HDMI, and then they did away with the AV out. So then I was less interested because I didn't like the idea. It's like I wanted to play it on a CRT. And then later on, we came to find out that the source code that was revealed that Hyperkin used was from stolen emulators. Emulators that were stolen from people over at RetroArch. Um, and there was emulators that could have been licensed, but they didn't even bother to. And they encrypted it and tried to hide it, but they got caught. And there are certain emulators they used, for, for example, the SNES... Uh, uh, was it X9 or 9X? Whatever you say, it, I'll look it up. Yeah, legally, you cannot use that. It is a non-commercial, exclusively licensed, you know, emulator. It's for fair use. It's not fair use to sell that. They're making a profit off something that's designed to be free. And they, yeah, they their, their source code was basically stolen and used for a commercial device. And this is in violation of their copyright laws and the and it infringed on these creators rights and these were small creators these people were just individuals who were hobbyists and they have you know license licenses to their creation and they were basically robbed and this doesn't get talked about much anymore these days i feel like people have just kind of forgotten about it so i wanted to dig this story up and don't quote me on this but i think somebody told me this and this is just hearsay that hyperkin had gotten the license i guess after the fact after they had gotten caught st stealing for a few of these emulators but not that obviously they could never get the snes x9 or whatever i think yeah the fact that they're making a profit off somebody else's work is what's an issue for me so and i'm i bought hyperkin products before i bought the snes uh mouse because they're they're at their third party mouse because they're the ones that make one i'd buy it from somebody else if somebody else made one honestly but yeah, overall, I thought that was just something that was people don't seem to talk about anymore. And yeah, I personally believe it to be a shady practice, and obviously it violates copyright law. And I think at the end of the day, what they should have done back in those days, at least, they should have just, you know, gave it, you know, components that played it and not actually done emulators. Because at the end of the day, when you put a game in a Retron 5, you're not really putting a game in. You're basically just activating a ROM. It's an emulator box, basically. It's not really playing those games. And Cyber Gadget did the exact same thing with their Retro Freak system. They basically stole emulators. But the nice thing was when you put the game in there, it actually dumps the ROM to the SD card. So you could take the SD card out and basically you have your own dumped ROM. At least that was serving a purpose. This was an incredibly restrictive system that was restrictive for absolutely no real reason. Ironically, though, you know, they were worried probably about, you know, getting in trouble for copyright infringement, you know, because people just playing their own ROMs, but as they were just stealing emulators. I think there's a real irony in all that. But anyways, yeah, it's interesting to look back at this seven years later. And I remember being like, kind of like, I hope they do something. I hope they, you know, get it figured out. And I don't think they ever got it figured out. So... Anyways, I just wanted to bring light to that again. Anyways, what are your guys' thoughts? Do you guys have a Retron 5? What do you guys think? What's Do you think the Retron 5 is even good by today's standards? Considering there's all so many awesome, you know, FPGA machines like, you know, the Mister and you know, there's other great ways to play old games that aren't as bad as that. Comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay awesome in this universe. Thanks. Bye.